all the objections to nuclear, if you look at them empirically, they're not sound in terms of safety issues. What it really boils down to is people think there's something unnatural about splitting the atom and creating this kind of waste, even though we have ways of dealing with the waste. They just think there's something wrong. So really what's going on is at the root, they think it's unnatural, we shouldn't do it, and thus they're placing unchanged nature over human life. And I think the same thing is going on with fossil fuels where people think that us influencing the climate is inherently bad. I think it's bad if it's really bad for human life and if that is not outweighed by the positives of fossil fuels, but I think in general it's a great thing to influence climate. I mean, we, I would want to be able to neutralize Hurricane Harvey in the future. We do indoor climate change constantly with heating and air conditioning, that's amazing. This idea that change is bad or that unchanged nature is good, I think that's a really bad idea. And I think that is the core idea of our energy discussion. In philosophy, there's an issue called standard of good, which is how do you measure the right choice versus the wrong choice? When we talk about progress, how do we know what's leading to progress and what's not? And there's a question of what are we measuring it by? And in our discussion, what we usually measure it by is how green it is. Sometimes we say how renewable it is, but we usually exclude hydro from that. So it's really green, and green means unchanged nature. And I don't think about it that way. I don't think of what's the greenest energy, just like I don't choose medicines by what's the greenest medicine, or cell phones by what's the greenest cell phone. I choose things by what's the best overall for human life. And if you take this idea of green seriously, like if we say we want to minimize our impact, well, historically, if we had wanted to minimize our impact, I, don't, we, I think if Greenpeace had been around when we decided to turn a patch of dirt and trees into New York City, they would have given it a big thumbs down. And I think if the Sierra Club were advising my parents on whether to self-replicate four times with me and my three younger sisters, they would say no. The Sierra Club actually tells young women that if you have one child, your carbon legacy increases by a factor of six. And we all are supposedly, the height of virtue is to minimize our CO2 emissions. And if we really believe in being green, then I think we have to acknowledge that North Korea is basically the greenest country in the world. Like, they've had almost no impact on nature, right? Like, a, the North Korean non-existent hotel, that's a lot greener than any of our hotels. So, we have an idea that is telling us that we shouldn't make an impact, an idea that if we had followed it in the past, would have restricted progress. And my view is that idea is going to restrict progress today. So, I think the key thing that needs to change is we need to stop measuring things by how little... Uh, we impact nature, including how little carbon we have. That's at most a piece of the puzzle, but it's not an end in itself to have low carbon. The end in itself is human flourishing.